All right, as you can see here, I have a very nice ZSH prompt right here. I have a nice theme. It tells me all the Git information that I need. If I type out some command, it gives me some nice highlighting and it auto fills for me. So it suggests some command that I should run. So these are a whole bunch of very nice and useful features that I use all the time. But if you just use ZSH out of the box, then you're not going to get all of these different features. And in fact, it's not too impressive straight out of the box. So if you just run ZSH right out of the box, then this is all you're going to get for your prompt. You're not gonna get any syntax highlighting. You're not gonna get any auto completion. And if you do actually want to have a nice configuration that works well, then you're probably going to have to do a lot of setup work. So let me just show you the configuration I have right here. So this is the config file for my ZSH. This is my ZSHRC. And all the commands that are in here, I had to put in by hand. And so I had to install all these plugins myself. I had to copy and paste a bunch of options from Stack Overflow whenever something wasn't working properly. And I basically had to trial and error to set up my configuration right here. And this might take a little bit of time. Maybe you don't have the patience to set up your own configuration and you want something out of the box that just works. You don't want to have to do all the setup yourself. And so you might have heard of something like oh my ZSH. This is a framework that basically will give you kind of something like this. It will set up a lot of things for you so you don't have to do all the work yourself. But the problem I have with oh my ZSH is it's just very slow. So especially if you load in a lot of oh my ZSH plugins, then just starting up your shell is going to be very slow. You're going to notice how slow it is. And also it just comes with a ton of features that you probably won't use ever. So I don't really like it. It's a little bit too much for my tastes. And so if you want a nice Z shell configuration without doing any work yourself, then I would really recommend using this script right here. It's called ZSH for humans. And it basically gives you a nice command, something like what I had just by running a simple wizard right here. You go through a few options, you tell it what you want, and it'll set up everything for you. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to put too much thought into their ZSH configuration, but you still want something nice to look at and something that'll be fast and have a lot of features, then give this a shot. So let me just show you how this works exactly. And let me just copy the installation script right here. This is just running the install script in either curl or wget, whatever you have. And if you already have any ZSH configuration files like an existing ZSHRC or anything else like a Z profile or a ZSHN file, it'll back up all these for you. So don't worry that all of your work will get erased. If you want, you can just try it out without really losing anything. So let me just run this command here. Go ahead and install that. And right away it's going to ask me what kind of keyboard I'm using. I have a PC, so it's going to use the backspace key and no option. What key binding do I prefer? Let me just go with standard, not the VI mode. But I'm going to use the normal key bindings. Do I want to run it in Tmux? No. Do I use DIRENV? No, I don't. What should I do with the existing files? Let's just back up these. And I was just going to go over and install everything and generate all the configuration files like the ZSHRC. And then it's also going to walk you through uh, configuring the theme, which is power level 10K. That's going to be P10K configure. This should automatically pop up for you, but I already had it installed. So it's just going to walk you through something like this. It's going to ask you a few questions. I have a whole other video on power level 10K if you want to learn a little bit more about this theme. I would highly recommend it. It's very nice. But let me just go through and answer all these real quick. And you can choose the kind of prompt that you want. I like mine to be very minimal. So let me just do number one. Colors, show current time, no, one line, compact, few icons, concise. Again, I have a video on this if you want to learn more about it. But once you've gone through this wizard, you will now have a very nice uh, setup ZSHRC that will have basically everything you need right out of the box. So let me show you what you all get. You get this nice terminal theme that I said, is power level 10K. So if you go into some repository then it'll show you all the git information right here that's very useful you have syntax highlighting so it will turn green if it's a command that you actually have and if you put in some random command it will be red it has auto completion for me so if I want to CD into something in my history then it will automatically pre-fill it out for me 
And I can also search through my history by maybe typing something like Eric and then going up and down to search through everything in my history that has Eric in it. That's very useful for finding old commands that you used before. And there's more than that, but those are the basic features that I use the most often. If you want a complete list of everything that's going to install, then you can take a look right here. So it'll show you all of the features right here. And one of the main features is just that it's very, very fast. So whenever you start up a new ZSH prompt, it'll just open right away. Maybe if you use something like, oh my ZSH, it'll lag a little bit. And so the developer of this has just gone through and done everything that they can just to make it as speedy as possible. So this is one of the main features, just that it'll be very fast and you'll never see any lag or anything like that. And so if you just want a basic configuration, you are now done. You have a nice little configuration right here. But let's go through and change a few things. Let's open up the zshrc file in the home directory. All right, this is gonna have a whole ton of different options in it. And you probably wanna look through here just to make sure that everything looks good to you. So we can actually auto update zsh and all of your plugins if you want. But you can also run, manually run z4h update to update everything. So you can just run this and it will automatically update everything for you. So by default, it will only update if you actually run that command, because to be honest, you don't really need to update your ZSH plugins that often. They don't really get updated that often. But if you want, you can automatically configure it to auto update. And by default, it puts the prompt at the bottom, which I don't really like. So you can change that right here by changing this to no. A lot of these options you already configured in the wizard. So this is just saying it's a PC configuration and it has a few options here for the plugins. But to be honest, most of these you don't really need to change. You can look through it if you want. But let's talk about how to install additional plugins. So you might want to install some additional plugins that aren't already installed. So let's install a ZSH plugin that I like right here. So I'm going to add in here ZSH auto notify. So you would just paste the GitHub name, the username, and then the name of the repository right here. So let me just show you, this is the GitHub repository right here. So you just copy this part and this will clone the repository into your local files. And then if you actually want to load it, you would go down here and you would load it in like this. So you would run source if you want to source an individual plugin file, but you would run load if you want to load in the entire uh, directory right here. For me, I'm just going to load in a single file Let's see, it's the auto notify plugin.zsh right here. So let me just paste this in here. It's going to be in this folder, and then it's called auto notify.plugin.zsh. And so if I put that in correctly, then it should load that in next time I start up ZSH. Let's run this. And it's automatically installing the plugin and restarting it. And we now have the auto notify script. We can just run some command just to make sure that's actually working correctly. And we got a notification right here. That is what the plugin was supposed to do. So that is very useful. So that's how you can load in additional scripts if you want. You can also add in aliases and you can basically do whatever you would do in a traditional ZSHRC. It just has a bunch of these options and Z4H commands right here. But down below that, you can basically put in whatever you would normally put in. So if you find some option on Stack Overflow or something, you can just paste it in here. So down here we have some functions. Down here we have some aliases. So if you wanted to add some more of those, you could definitely do that. But do be aware that ZSH for Humans is kind of opinionated. They do kind of want you to do things their way. So if you want to change the terminal theme, maybe you don't want to use Power Level 10K, you want to use something else. Well, it's a little bit difficult to change it. So my personal recommendation is if you don't really like the default configuration that it provides for you, then you might want to think twice before you use this. But if you want something totally different from what they have, I would not recommend installing that. It would just make things harder, in my opinion. But before I finish things up, let me just go over one more cool feature that I like from here, and it's the SSH feature that they have here. So if you enable this, it will actually port your ZSH configuration into a new machine that you log into with SSH. So if you have a VPS, a remote VPS that you're SSHing into, maybe it's your own personal web server, then you can automatically set it to whenever you SSH in there, it will copy your ZSH configuration over there. Let me just show you an example right here. So let's say if I go into my web server right here, 
it's ericmurphy.xyz, then enable this option. So if I restart my ZSH and then I SSH into my server right here, then the first time you start it up, it will install a whole bunch of things and it will copy all of your configuration files over here. But as you can see, I now have the exact same terminal right here. So I have the exact same prompt and I get all the same options. So it will syntax highlight, I can search through my history and all of that. If you've ever found it annoying to work with the default prompt that you get when you SSH into a server, this will make things a lot easier. Now I will install all this to your server, so just keep that in mind that it is installing a whole bunch of files here, so just keep that in mind. So here we can just see everything that it's installed right here, zshrc, end file, power level 10k. Okay, let me just leave this though. And if you do want to see all the files that it has installed, it is going to be in .cache slash zsh for humans right here. And so this is all the files that it's installed. So all the plugins are in here as well. And so if for some reason you actually want to go through these files and edit things, then you can. But of course the recommended way would just be to go through the zshrc file. And finally, if you want to uninstall this, if you've tried it out and you just don't really want to use it, then what you can do is you can just remove the zshrc that it's installed. Basically all the files that it's installed here. So we have the power level 10k file right here. We have the zshrc file, the zshn file, and the .p10k zsh file. You would just go through and remove all of these. And then of course your old zsh files are in this zsh backup folder. So you would just go through and copy and paste these here back into your home directory. That's the best way to get things back to normal if for some reason you're not into this. That's a pretty nice and easy way to get up and running with ZSH. Like I said, if you don't want to do a whole bunch of configuration, then this is probably going to be your best bet right here. And of course, I'll leave a link to this GitHub in the description right here. If you have any more questions, you can just read about it here and go through all the different commands and features it adds. I went through a lot of them in this video, but if you want to learn more, you can just check this out. So now you can save yourself or your friends from oh my ZSH. If you just want a quick, easy, and fast terminal prompt, then I would give ZSH for humans a chance.